Welcome to Cornerstone this morning. We're so glad you're here. Let's all stand, please. And as we celebrate the birth of our great nation this weekend, uh, we're going to listen to the choir sing our national anthem. You can feel free to join in. Thank you, choir. And uh, now please join me in singing a song written for the 100th American Independence Day celebration, considered by many to be the national hymn, song number 573 in our songbooks and on the screen, God of Our Fathers. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for freedom, uh, freedom in this country, but especially freedom through the blood of Jesus Christ that sets us free the day that we called on you to be our Savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving me and for saving everyone that's here this morning that has called on your name. Uh, Lord, Heavenly Father, we just ask that um, 
your grace and your mercy would be upon us today. Watch over Pastor and his heart. Lord, that your mercy and grace would just flow throughout the service this morning and that the Holy Spirit would just work in our hearts and help us to listen, uh, more importantly, just to hear what you have to say. Uh, you are a mighty God and so loving. We are so thankful for that, Lord. Uh, thank you for our church. We're able to meet here, Lord, without uh, any kind of uh, enemy, uh, uh, strongholds against us, uh, just just free to worship the way that we are. And uh, we, we are thankful for that, Lord. We truly are. Uh, watch over the choir. Lord, watch over the teachers and watch over every heart that's here this morning that you can lift their burden today and you can set them free if they just call on you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blood and the freedom it offers. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Brother Mike. Please stand together. And we'll sing a little bit more familiar song, possibly. Five, five, six, nine, Battle Hymn of the Republic. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the faithful lightning of his turn and those who absorb. His truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. This will be our handshake verse. I've seen him in the watchfires of a hundred circling camps. They have builded him an altar in the evening news and damp. I can read his righteous sentence by the dim and flaring lamp. His day is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Please join me on the fourth. In the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me. As he died to make men holy, let us live to make men free while God is marching on. Lord, be seated and now the choir will sing
He's the God of all grace this morning. Amen. Amen. Great job, choir. Really enjoyed that special. Happy 4th of July Sunday morning, and welcome to Cornerstone Baptist Church. We're so glad to have you this morning, and uh, we thank all of the servicemen and women who've, who've sacrificed their lives and, and given themselves in service to our country. And just for a moment, if, if you served our country in the military, would you mind please standing to your feet? We'd like to recognize you this morning. If you're able to, would you please stand to your feet? And I like to do this. We're going to, um, from the floor, if you would, we'll just start over here to my left with Brother Huddlemeyer and work our way this way. If you could just share the branch that you were in, uh, maybe your rank and name, uh, years of service, anything you'd like to share as you recognize our veterans this morning. So, Brother Huddlemeyer, would you start with you, please, sir? Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, yes, sir. Um, in the back here, are you standing, Brother Harrington? Anybody that served in the military, if you could. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Brother McGinnis, you just came in, Brother McGinnis. We're sharing uh, what branch you were in, how long you served. Thank you for your service. Is there in the front here? Thank you, sir. All right, Dr. Ray. Thank you, sir. All right, uh, Brother John. <laughs> well, thank you for your service, Reamers. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Oh, God bless you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> We'll, we'll move past that. We don't want to start anything this morning. Yes, sir. United States Marine Corps Center Aviation Academy. Thank you very much. If we could give all of these servicemen and women a hand. Thank you so much uh, for everything you've done and continue to do for our country. Uh, just a couple announcements this morning. Ladies who signed up for the Lighthouse Ladies Conference. Please turn in the $30 to my wife that's still owed. Um, we need nursery workers, so please see my wife as well if you're interested in that. And also, the, we need hosts for the teen snack attack from July through the end of the year. So if you're interested, please see the pointers for that. And then the men's prayer breakfast is going to be this Saturday, July 9th at 9 a.m. And we're going to be having a great time of food and fellowship and fun, the three F's of any good Baptist church. Food Fellowship Fund, I guess four, Faith too. Uh, we'll have your faith increased by a, a lesson in God's Word. And then we're also asking all the men that are able to after the breakfast and the devotion time to help us canvas for the bus right after that as well. And then looking forward to July 16th. July 16th is going to be our second Senior Patriots of the season. And we're going to have um, from 10 o'clock till 1130-ish, we're going to be having food, fellowship, fun, faith again. And we're going to have team day. So if you have a favorite college team, professional team that you root for, to cheer for, uh, maybe your alumni you graduated from, wear your team gear, come. We're going to have some uh, team kind of food, uh, ham, uh, hot dogs, um, beans, and things like that. So it'll be a great time. And we have some games and fun activities. And just please get the word out. Invite your friends that you know, 50 years and older. They're more than welcome to come as we meet. Uh, in the church cafeteria. And then the last Saturday of the month, July 30th, we're going to have Saturday saturation at 930 is when we're going to meet for donuts and refreshments. And then we'll be heading out at 10 a.m. after that. Now, July 31st is going to be a fifth, ser fifth Sunday service. It's going to be a little bit special. Uh, we're going to have everything that we normally do. So Sunday school on July 31st for the fifth day service will be at 10. The morning service at 11. We're going to have a pitch-in meal time together. 
So if you're able to bring in some food for us to enjoy and then have the early afternoon service around two o'clock, then right after that, we're going to invite everybody from the church, their friends, their family, and the community to come for a softball game. We're going to be playing a softball game right out here on the grass lot behind the church building, and we'll have a great time. We're going to have some hot dogs and nachos and cheese and different things like that. So uh, make plans to join us. If you have gear, if you have extra gloves, bats, softballs, bring it so we can make sure everybody has enough gear for for everyone to play. And it, we're going to have we're going to be careful about it, but the younger kids are going to play too. We may have like an inning where the younger kids play against each other. Um, I want this to be a family event. Um, we've done a lot of things separately for different folks in the church, but I want this to be where everybody f- uh, from the older saints to the younger teens and their families and young families can play and be involved. So make plans to join us for that as we have a great time together as a church family. Here's a couple um, announcements I want to share with you, some prayer request announcements. Uh, You may have not heard, but Christy Bowers, Mrs. Williams' daughter, passed away, and uh, they're going to be making funeral arrangements for her. So please be in prayer for the family. Also, pray for Brother Billy Johnson for his hip surgery coming up July 6th. And then um, Mrs. Shake's great niece, Kaylee, um, is having a brain scan or had a brain scan. Where's Mrs. Shake at? Is she having it upcoming or is it already taking place? Okay, so just pray for the results to come back um, with positive results there and just continue to pray for the Harrington's relative that passed away and also for um, someone named Carrie that Kathy Harrington is friends with had an overdose on fentanyl. So just keep those in your prayers and we'll go ahead and pray for the offering and then we'll continue with the service. Dear Heavenly Father, as we continue our service, Lord, thank you for our founding fathers that thought it was important to um, to start this country off with um, freedom of religion, Lord, and allow us to freely worship you, Lord. Lord, thank you for all that you've given this country, Lord. Just help us to turn back to you and to do your will in our, our lives, in our community, and help us to be the shining lights that you've asked us to be in, in our community. As you, we've given, um, as you've given us time to give back to you, Lord, allow all the tithes and offerings to go to the glory of you. We thank you and praise you in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Brother Terry, that should be all of our prayer. God bless America. Let's all stand together, please, with me. We'll sing song number 279, Faith of Our Fathers.
verse. Our fathers chained in prison stark were still in heart and conscience free. Oh, sweet could be their children's faith if they like them could die. the junior church children may be dismissed to the back to meet your leader there for your service on the third verse please faith of our fathers we will strive to win all nations unto thee amen and through the truth that comes from shall then be truly free. Sing it out. Faith of our fathers, holy faith, we will be true to thee till death. Faith of our fathers, we will love both friend and foe. message ensemble will sing.
fiber of creation and he meant for us to all be free and whole Wow. <laughs> that was great, wasn't it? That was powerful. You can't see it, but all these hairs on my neck are standing up right now. We call them glory bumps. You know, anybody else get glory bumps on their arms when they're singing that? Man, that's, that's the message. They didn't see my notes, but that's the message this morning. If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you can be free. You can be free in the truest sense of the word, and I'm excited to share God's word with you this morning. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Galatians, Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5, and we'll look at it in verse number 13 here in a moment. I'm just going to be honest with you up front. It's going to be a lot of introduction, and we'll get to the message here in a moment. But you can't, I have this day once, once a year, okay? So you're going to have to give me some grace. We're going to cover some patriotic things in the introduction, and then we'll get into the message today. But um, if you can't tell from my tie, I love America, all right? And if you, if you haven't figured it out by, by now, you're in a church that loves America, and a lot of people frown on the fact that we are Americans, and that is not this guy this morning. I love America, and yes, she has problems, and yes, there's been skeletons in the closet, but America is still the greatest nation on the face of the planet because we've been a nation that's founded on God's word, and we've tried to uh, have an environment of freedom where God's word could go forth, and so I'm thankful to be an American and I'm thankful for the God behind America this morning. And Galatians chapter 5.13 is where we'll get to in a moment. And I definitely want to not overlook this announcement. I definitely forgot it this earlier. But please be in prayer for Miss Betty Davis. She's having some kidney problems. Just please be in prayer for Betty Davis. And also keep the Longworth family in your prayers. Just still dealing with the absence of their loved one as well. So just please keep those folks in your prayers. July 4th. July 4th is a special day. 
It's a day where 246 years ago, 246 years ago, on July 4th, 1776, our nation signed a declaration of our independence. And I love history, so you're going to have to bear with me. I love history, and that was more than just a piece of paper being signed. If you understand what that uh, document meant and stood for, it was telling Great Britain, we're telling England that we were no longer under their reign. We were going to be an autonomous nation, free to worship as they pleased. And that's what uh, 246 years ago, Declaration of Independence uh, means to us today. This was an historical event where we were establishing ourselves as a free nation to worship God freely. In every conflict since then, the brave colonials that gave their life in defiance to the, the nation of England, there's been many a brave man and a woman who've stepped on a battlefield that's shed their blood and given their life in sacrifice to ensuring that from that day, July 4, 1776, you and I would still have the freedoms that we enjoy this morning. And that's the day that we're celebrating today. It's not about cookouts, and I love cookouts. It's about uh, the liberty that we have on the sacrifice of those that served our great nation in its defense. And I thank you on behalf of myself, my family, the church. Thank you to all the brave men and women who've sacrificed and served this great nation. There's been many patriots, brave patriots throughout our existence that have made a, a great impact on our existence and our history. But here's one that I looked at, and it's Patrick Henry. You know Patrick Henry, right? Patrick Henry. He made a pretty famous statement that I'm wanting to, to preach on this morning. He made the statement, give me liberty or give me death. And that statement was literally him expressing his desire to die a free man than to live to see the day where that freedom was taken from him. And I want to echo uh, Patrick Henry's remarks this morning. I'm thankful that I'm free, and I would rather die a free man than ever live to see those freedoms taken from me and my family and those I hold dear. And Patrick Henry felt so uh, strongly about his conviction of his love and loyalty to his country, he made that proclamation so many years ago. And I want to remind us this morning that we have a choice today to make is liberty or death. I want to preach on that thought. Liberty or death. Liberty or death. Uh, the word liberty in the dictionary de definition means this. It means freedom. The freedom to choose, freedom to live, and freedom to speak. It's our God-given right for freedom. Freedom from oppression and bondage of another. And I've already warned you. You're going to have to bear witness with me, bear, bear some uh, grace with me today. As an American, I want to share some American liberties that I'm thankful for this morning. And honestly, every, every single uh, free American today should, should be thankful for these same liberties that we have as Americans. The freedom of speech. I'm thankful that we, what we're doing now, we're free to do so. And that's not always been the case. There's been people, like the song said, I don't know if you caught it in the, in the lyrics, it said, even face hell itself. There's people that have tr had to risk and hazard their life and stand in great opposition, even fear of losing their own life, to do what we do freely now. And we should take that seriously and be grateful for it. Our freedom of speech. And I'd encourage every single American here today to read through and familiarize yourself with your amendment rights and your constitutional rights. Because if you don't know what they are, you shouldn't bellyache about the problems that are going on around you. Know what, know what the Constitution says. Know what your amendment rights are. The First Amendment, the First Amendment in our Bill of Rights, which reads this, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, a church, establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Every American, every American Christian should be thankful for our First Amendment right. What we're doing today, we're constitutionally, according to our Bill of Rights, allowed to do so freely. And, and COVID happened a few years ago. And people responded different ways, and that's fine. That's fine. But what I never liked and appreciated about what happened during the virus was the government telling churches they could not freely assemble in person anymore. 
And that's what I had. I had a direct problem with that because it, con- it violates the, what the Word of God says, but also it violates our First Amendment right. We also have the freedom to bear arms. Is everybody okay? Is everybody okay this morning? I mean, I know I'm talking about the freedom of speech and everything, but it got quiet. Okay, freedom to bear arms. If I didn't make you mad with this one, it'll probably make you mad with this one. Uh, freedom to bear arms is our Second Amendment right. In our Bill of Rights, it reads this. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms. And I'm not talking about right arm and left arm. I'm talking about arms, okay? The right to bear arms shall not be infringed. And listen, we're in America. We're free to make decisions for ourselves. If you use your freedom to say, I don't want to own a gun, great, that's more for me to buy in the gun store. Okay, but what I don't, what I have a problem with is people saying that I don't have the right to defend my family and those that are precious to me. I'm telling you what, I'm thankful that I have the right to defend myself and the people that I hold dear in my life, my family. If anybody is crazy enough to kick in that door of that mission house, I've got a nine millimeter, I've got a 45, and if that, if I run out of ammo for those, I've got a 12 gauge shotgun in the closet. I'm thankful for the right to bear arms. And listen, for personal protection, yes. But what people don't understand is the necessity of a free state. Do you understand if it wasn't for a handful of militiamen that owned weapons that the British would just have wiped through us and we'd be speaking uh, colonial British right now, sipping tea and eating crumpets? We should be thankful that people had a backbone and the will to do what they believed was right and own guns. And a few people, militiamen, farmers, took their guns and withstood a British empire to have the freedom that we have today. I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful also. Listen, if the first two didn't get you, this will get you. The third one is this I'm thankful for, the freedom to vote. The freedom to vote that we have. We're a different nation in the fact that we don't have a, a, a fake, uh, fake election where people, the militia has guns and they have one name on a ballot and it's a rigged election. Well, I'm not getting off on that. Um, the freedom to vote, the freedom to vote, all right? The people are in charge. Do you understand that? That's the way that our government was structured, given the power to the people. Those stuff suits in the White House and stuff suits in Congress and everything else, they don't run the country. You know what they're supposed to do? They're supposed to be representing us, the people, their constituents. And here's the, here's the beauty of our structure system in America where we have the right to vote. If we don't like what they're doing, we can vote them out. Vote them out. And we should. If we have leaders and leadership that are not doing what they said in their campaign trail and honoring what they, what they said in their campaign trail to get our votes, we vote them out. That's the beauty of living in America that you should be thankful for today. Is everybody okay? Okay. Amen. Fourth of July. But listen, I don't care if you disagree. I, I'm, not, I'm not going into whether you're a donkey or an elephant. I'm not going there. Definitely not going there. But listen, I'll let you know, I'll let you know some things that I believe strongly, and you let me know what party I belong to. I, I believe strongly, wholeheartedly in, in uh, pro-life. Pro-life. I believe that every single life is precious in God's sight, and only the author of life, God himself, has the right to end it. I believe, too, I believe, too, that we should be standing with God's people, Israel. I'm pro-Israel. I'm pro-life. I'm pro-God. I'm pro-Bible. You have already clearly know I'm pro-gun. I'm pro-free uh, uh, choice and freedom to make decisions on your own. I'm pro-police. Do you understand what party I belong to? I'm not going to tell you which one I am because that will cause trouble, but you just, you just connect the dots. But more importantly than being whatever I am, I'm a Bible believer. And I don't believe any Christian in here in the, in the auditorium today should vote against the Bible. I'm not going to tell you who to vote for, but I tell you who you're not supposed to vote for. Anybody that violates the Word of God. Anybody that votes in favor of, supports in favor of murder and butcher and wholesale of innocent lives, babies, is not getting my vote. And shouldn't get a Christian's vote. Anybody that is against God and pro LG, whatever letters are involved in that, homosexuality, sodomy, and, and pervertedness is not getting a single vote for me. We should vote according to the Word of God. 
Those are all things I'm thankful for this morning as an American. But listen, more importantly than being American, and by the way, this is just extra too, there's an absurd thing out there that thinks if you are uh, in favor of America, then you worship an idol. Uh, it's, it's called nationalism, nationalist worship. You're worshiping America. I'm not worshiping America. I'm a Christian. I'm a Bible believer first. And th that's not wrong to love the country that God blessed as we honored him. That's just extra. But here's, here's some Christian liberties that I'm thankful for this morning that everybody here should be thankful for as well. Soul liberty. Soul liberty. Do you understand what that means? As Baptists and Bible believers, we believe in soul liberty. Every single person has the liberty and freedom to choose for themselves and make decisions for themselves what they do. God's desire is that we use our liberty that he's given us willingly to accept him and live for him and serve him and not abuse the this liberty that we have. In Galatians chapter 5.13, the Bible says this, For brethren, ye have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love serve one another. And there's so many verses we can share with you about that. But everybody here has soul liberty. No one here is going to go to hell for anybody else. If anyone here is going to go to hell, it's because you chose personally to reject the Lord Jesus Christ. You personally re chose to reject the gospel message and the gospel invitation. And you chose that. And, and listen, if anybody is going to go to hell, they do so by choice and they do so by their soul liberty. In Romans chapter 14, verse 4, the Bible says this. It says, who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master, to his own master, he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holding up, for God is able to make him stand. Everybody here, having the sole liberty to choose for themselves, is going to stand before their master one day. And you're not going to give the excuse, well, my daddy didn't take me to church when I was smaller, or my mother didn't really t teach me the Bible. You have and I have a choice to make in our, in our soul liberty this morning to accept him or reject him now. You're here this morning. It's not by chance. You're here today where there's a church that still preaches the word of God and still has an old-fashioned altar that's going to be opened up in a moment where you can respond during the invitation and get saved and get right. You have no excuse because God brought you here today. God brought you here today where you're here in the Bible and you have an opportunity to respond. In 2 Corinthians 5.10, the Bible says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, for the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. We're going to stand before God in judgment one day. You may be able to change your dentist appointment, your chiropractor appointment. You may be able to postpone your doctor's appointment. But there is an appointment on God's calendar that nobody here has the right or authority to change your altar. And that's the day where we stand before God, a holy, righteous judge. And we're going to have to give an account of ourselves to God. If you're saved, you'll give account of yourself of what have you done for me after salvation? What, have you, what do you have to show for your life living in a free nation like America? I'm getting ahead of myself, but listen, the biggest disgrace that we have as American Christians is we, uh, we have the liberty to propagate the gospel, and still, and still we're not doing a job that we should. We have the freedom that we have to possess the word of God and to preach the word of God and to go door to door and soul win and spread the gospel. And many Christians today don't do that. It's a disgrace that we have the freedom that we have, and yet we still choose not to do so. We're going to stand before God, and if you're lost, you're going to stand before God, a holy, righteous God, and have to answer for yourself of why you chose to reject the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. We went door knocking this week, and six souls got saved. Six souls got saved. And that's wonderful, but it's heartbreaking because some people looked at me and they said, God being a loving God will consider the rough things that happened to me in my life. And he will be sympathetic with me and allow me into heaven because of what I've endured in my life. I'm not trying to be insensitive, but it does not matter what you've been through in your life. 
It doesn't matter the trauma that you've experienced. God, as a righteous, just God, has to deal righteously with sin. And it doesn't matter if you come from a, a broken home, a rough life, an abusive situation. What matters is what you've done with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you've accepted him or you've, or you've rejected him. The liberty that we have is soul liberty. Also, we see this. We have liberty this morning from sin. Liberty from sin. Christ died paying for all of our sins so that we can enjoy freedom and liberty from the entanglement and the bondage of sin that he saved us from. Look at it with me in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8 verses 1 and 2. The Bible says this. It says, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. And then in verse number 21, the Bible says, Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. 2 Corinthians 3.17 says, Now the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. In Romans chapter 6, verse 18, the Bible says, Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. Do you understand in salvation, I, it's a complex thing, and it's simple where anybody that has faith in the Lord Jesus can be saved. But to understand everything that took place when you got saved, or will take place if you get saved, it's a remarkable thing. You not only got a ticket out of hell and into heaven, you got liberty in the truest sense of the word. You and I were enslaved to sin, serving our master, the, our father, the devil. And then Jesus Christ came to this earth. He, he took on himself all the sins of the world, all your sins, the past, present, and future sins upon himself. And the Bible says there's none righteous, there's no perfect person alive today. But there was one man who walked this earth. His name is the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And he, as a perfect man, came to earth and took on all the sins of the world upon himself and willingly went to the cross and died for your sins and shed his blood for your sins and so now and now nobody here can be perfect the bible says there's none righteous no not one you think about the most perfect person you can think about the best person that you know it's my mother my mother's the best person i know strong lady that held our family together the the best person that we know is nowhere clear close to being perfect Nowhere close to being perfect. So what happens? The Bible says we're all, uh, we all fall short of the glory of God. God's standard of gaining access to heaven is perfection. And we've already established that nobody here is perfect. So where does that leave us? Somebody perfect had to step in our place. And that person was a Lord Jesus Christ who came to this earth and died for our sins. And so now, and so now, after Jesus Christ shed his blood on that cross, and that blood was acceptable in God's eyes, God does not see you and I as sinners that have trusted him as Savior. He sees the perfectness, the perfection of his son, the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have freedom and liberty from sin. We don't have to live like we were living before Jesus saved us. To live in sin after we choose to be, after we have chose to be saved, to be lived in its, to live in its shackles, is literally choosing slavery over freedom that God gave us. We have a liberty this morning to preach the gospel. As far as I know, no one's called the police yet. As far as I know, there's nothing constitutionally speaking that would prohibit us doing what we're doing this morning. We have the freedom to be preaching the gospel. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. In Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1. The Bible says this. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord hath anointed me. To preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me. To bind up the broken hearted. To proclaim liberty. To the captives. And the opening of the prison. To them that are bound. If you want a definition of why we do what we do and what a preacher's job description, look no further than Isaiah 61.1. 1. 
Do you know what we do every time someone steps behind this pulpit? We're preaching liberty to anyone that'll listen. Liberty, the chance to be free. You know what? Celebrating liberty is not just one thing we do in July. It's something that should be done every single day of the life of a believer. Living in liberty that we have. And telling others that are broken hearted, that are discouraged, that are captive, how they can be free as well. Liberty is a responsibility of the believer. We have the responsibility as free men to tell others that are enslaved how they can be free as well. And we need to get busy doing that, preaching the gospel to every lost person out there. We have the law of liberty. We have the law of liberty this morning, and that's the word of God. In James chapter 1, verse 25, the Bible says this, But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. And then in John chapter 8, verse 36, the Bible says, oh, Joshua chapter 1, verse 8, the Bible says this, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. We want to have liberty. We want to have the blessing of God in our life and to be what God wants us to be. It's going to take the, the word of God, the law of liberty. And I want to spend just, this is where we wanted to get to, and i got five minutes to do this. The liberty of salvation. The liberty of salvation. Salvation is the free, completely free, no strings attached, gift of everlasting life, the chance to live forever not in Indianapolis, but forever in heaven with the creator of the universe. In a perfect, wonderful place where there's no pain, there's no sickness, there's no death, there's no more parting, there's no more heartache, there's no more disease, pestilence, famine, everything else you can think of. It's a perfect, wonderful place. And God is offering you, you here today, that's not saved. That does not know for sure if you were to die right now. If you don't know for sure that you're saved. You can have the liberty that comes with salvation. A chance to live in a wonderful place that God's prepared for us. In, uh, in John chapter 5, 24, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. John 8, 36 says, if the Son, therefore, capital S, the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And then Galatians chapter 5, verse 1, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You know what, it's so hard for me to understand why somebody would want to leave America and go somewhere else. I mean, yes, there are problems in America. There are issues, legitimate issues. But where are you going to go that's better than America? And the freedoms that you have, and the blessings that are here, and everything else we could name. Here's, here's my advice, and let me just say, this is my opinion. You can do with this what you want, but I think I'm right. So you can, you can disagree with me. It's okay. You can be wrong, okay? I'm just kidding. I think, this is my personal opinion, those people that, are try, that have left a socialist, communistic nation like Venezuela that used to be one of the richest nations in the world, and now they're eating like dogs and animals on the street, uh, all these other communist, socialist nations, they left those nations, and they come here, and now they're trying to make America into the train wreck that they left. I've got a solution. I've never taken economics. I've never taken polit political classes. But if you hate America so bad, then go back where you came from. The same border that lets you in will let you out the same way you came. I just told you, some of you didn't like that. That's my opinion. And when you get to church, you can say what you want up here too, okay? 
But my opinion is, if you left a socialistic, communistic nation, and now the, the solution is to change America into what was a disaster, and you want it to be that so bad, go back to the communist nation that you left in the first place. Okay? Help yourself. That was my opinion. I told you that. So you can do with it what you want. Now, here, here's some truths about death, and we're done. Truths about death. Everyone dies. Everyone dies. It don't matter if you're healthy, if you eat carrots and drink celery juice, or if you, like me, eat little Debbies every day. We're going to die eventually. I'd rather die happy, okay? Um, but everyone dies, and there's nothing you and I can do about that. It, we can prolong it. We can make our lives more quality while we have it, but everyone is going to die. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27, the Bible says this, And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment, everybody has the day of their death on the calendar somewhere. And when that day comes, it's going to come, it's going to be swift, and it's going to be sure. Here's the question. If everyone dies, then what good is liberty in Christ do salvation? I mean, if someone that's saved dies and someone that's lost dies, we all die. I mean, what's really the benefit of being saved? Well, friend, physical death is not the end. The Bible says for the wages of sin is death. That's more than just a physical ceasing to exist. The Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the uh, whoremongers, the adulterers and so, uh, uh, sorcerers and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. That tells me there is more to this thing of just my heart stopped beating and they put my body six feet under the ground. There's three parts of us that make us who we are. Our body, our spirit, and our soul. The body they place in the ground, our spirit returns back to God. Our soul will spend forever somewhere. Where's your soul going to spend forever this morning? Where's your soul going to spend forever? You can die as a believer without perishing. You've seen in the Bible before where it says, uh, look at it with me in John chapter 11 verse 26. John chapter 11, verse 26, the Bible says, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall what? Let me ask you a question. Did the Bible lie? I mean, we're all going to die. We all do die. We've had people experience death already. The Bible, was it not true when it says we shall never die? Grandpa was saved. And why did he die? The Bible says he'll never die. There's a difference. There's a difference between dying and perishing. I'm telling you what, Brother, uh, Brother Longworth and uh, uh, Christy Bowers and others that have passed away, they are more alive than ever before right now. They are in the presence of an almighty God that they spent their whole life praising and serving and worshiping. They're with him right now. There's a difference between dying. They died, but they are not perishing. They are living in eternal glory in heaven as we speak right now. So as a believer, you can die and not perish. Someone that dies and perishes is someone who dies without knowing Jesus Christ as their Savior. And they will perish in eternity in hell. And uh, death is a result of sin. Death is an eternal separation from God in hell. We've already given you Revelation 21.8. Death is eternal. Death is eternal. It's not uh, soul annihilation. You don't just uh, uh, annihilate and disappear and that's the end of it. No, it's an eternal torment, an eternal punishment. The Bible has so much to say about this. Here's just a couple references. Those people that believe in soul annihilation. Well, I, will, I just die and then I'll suffer in hell for a moment. Then I'll just dissolve and, and that'll be it. Big whoop. Well, no, friend. It's an eternal, it's an eternal death. In 2 Thessalonians 1.9, the Bible says this. Who shall be punished with everlasting what destruction from the presence of the lord and from the glory of his power some people think the worst aspect of hell is the worm that dieth not the darkness the gnashing of teeth the the eternal falling and all the different things that you can name the fire and the, all that listen to friend the, the absence don't get it mixed up the, the the worst part of hell is a void an absence of god you don't get to enjoy the presence and power and glory of God as someone that will in heaven. I believe this, the reason why hell is so dark is because you don't have the capital, capital L light in hell. It's absence of God and never being able to know and experience the presence of God. But I'll tell you what, someone that knows Jesus Christ as their Savior, 
to be absent from the body is what? Present with the Lord. And then lastly, death is final. And I, I hate we sped through those last points. We could say so much more about it. But death is final. I believe this with all my heart. There is hope for anyone as long as their heart's still beating. As long as their lungs are still drawing the next breath, there's hope for you. If you're here today, I don't care. Please listen to me. I do not care the church background you came from. It doesn't matter to me the things that you could tell me you've done wrong with your life. So many people get hung up at their door or in public. Jesus Christ wants to save you right now. Well, if you'll come back next week, I'll try to get my life lined up and straightened out because it's a mess right now. And I've got to get it lined up where God can save me. Well, I can't make it to church this week, and I know I've got to get saved in church. Friend, listen to me. Jesus Christ wants to save you wherever you are. Now, I don't mean geographically. I mean wherever you are in your life, whether, you're, whether you come up from a addiction, messed up, problems, struggles, Jesus Christ can and wants to save you today. July 31st, 2011 is the day that I got saved. And I, I got saved in my, in my bedroom, in my recliner at 10 o'clock around 10 o'clock at night. You've heard my testimony before. I was drinking. I was partying. I was going to nightclubs, smoking pot. Jesus Christ didn't convict my soul that night and say, I'm convicting you, but I, wanna, I want you to get everything figured out before I can save you. I, I know I'm convicting you and you, you realize you need to get saved, but I tell you what, you need to do this and do that and do that before I, get, before, before I save you. Jesus Christ saved me where I was Save me. He came to me. When I couldn't come to him, he came to me. And listen, if you're here today, you have hope. As long as you're breathing, God brought you to a church that you could hear what you heard this morning. It's not by accident. There's other churches around us. You could have gone anywhere you, you wanted to go this morning, but God brought you providentially here. And that's to tell you, you have hope. And that you can be saved. God wants to save you today. But listen, the, the liberty that I've been preaching to you about, you have liberty to do with the message what you want to. God, the splendor of our God is he doesn't force himself on anybody. Doesn't twist your arm, neither will I. Doesn't hold a lightning bolt to your head, neither will I. It's not going to peer pressure you and embarrass you down the aisle to get saved, neither will I. I pour my heart out to you. I preach the Bible to you. I'm trusting that God will honor his word, that his word will not return void. And I'm praying that as soon as I bow my head and pray and beg the Holy Spirit of God to work on people's hearts, that he will. And I would just encourage you, as he draws you, don't resist it. You can come down to an old-fashioned altar like we have here. This is not just to make the platform two feet taller. This is a place where people have their lives altered. They come to the altar to, to have God alter their lives. You can step out of that aisle, and someone will see you. They will take God's word, and they will meet you where you are. And take as long as it takes to take the Bible and show you how you can be saved. Will you let them this morning? Or will you, like so many other people, have God speak to their heart, convict them, and walk out those doors, get in your car and go about your life? There's hope as long as your heart's still beating. But the danger with leaving here today is you don't know when that thing's going to stop beating. The Bible says we're not even guaranteed our next breath. And you've got your whole life and eternity planned out. I'll do that years from now. Ma'am, sir, you don't have the next breath that you have. You're not promised the next breath that God's given you right now. I just beg you. I just beg you. This July 3rd, Sunday morning, to come and experience liberty like you've never experienced it before 
and you'll never experience after. The liberty that comes with knowing Jesus Christ as your Savior. Will you let him, will you let him save you? Will you let him set you free this morning? I pray that you will. Let's have every head bowed, every eye closed. As the musicians come, and heads are bowed, and, and Christians are praying, I pray that this morning something that the Word of God you heard in the Word of God this morning spoke to your heart. God's promise to draw all men to himself. And I pray that he would begin, even now, begin drawing you to a point of decision. Oh, Father, please help us, Lord. We need you. We need you this morning. Words will not save anybody, Lord. A sermon outline won't save anybody. The Spirit of God can. The Spirit of God can draw them to a point where they choose to accept you. Lord, I, I'm just a human being. I can't see people's hearts. I can't see people's faith. God, but you can. Oh, God, would you go to that person that's here today that's lost? Lord, make them aware that they're lost. God, would you give them, give them the urging and the drawing of your Holy Spirit to step out of the aisle where they're sitting and let someone take the word of God and show them how they can be set free, free from their past, free from that long history of sin and the shame that comes with it. God, you can, this morning, make them into a new glorious creature. Have the old things, old man pass away and then make them new. Give them a fresh start. A new beginning. Hope. Holy Spirit of God, right now, please go to that heart. Go down every heart, go down to every aisle and speak to people, Lord. Have your will and your way on the rest of this invitation in Jesus' name. Amen. As we stand to our feet, would you please do business with the Lord? If you're not saved, if you died right now, would you be 100% sure of heaven? If you have some doubts or any questions at all, please come forward and talk to one of us. I wonder today, if you say, Pastor Morton, I can honestly say, has nothing to do with myself, being good enough, working, but I know that I know that I know that I'm saved this morning. I'm going to raise my hand to testify of that. If you know for sure that you're saved, would you raise your hand? And it's not because of what you've done. It's not because of how good you are or the church you attended or how many times you were baptized. But you raised your hand this morning because you trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. You realized you were a sinner and the, the punishment for that sin was death and hell. But God loved you, sent his son to die for you. And you are placing your faith in everything in him. If you said yes because of that, amen, praise the Lord. But if you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ, you're trusting in something else besides Jesus and what he's done for you, please let us talk to you about that. As Brother Tar sings. I need thee every hour, most gracious Lord. No tender voice like thine can peace afford. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Let's do one more verse, one more verse. If you're here and you don't know Jesus Christ, please, please seek one of us out. Last verse. I need thee every hour, stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee. Every hour I need thee, oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Thank you very much. We're always sad when nobody comes forward, but 
even though the, inv- the service is going to be ended, if, if we dismiss, when we dismiss, and you still need to talk to somebody, please come to me, my wife, anybody here can take God's word and show you how to be saved. Six souls got saved. That's English. I just heard that five souls, Spanish church, got saved this week. That's 11 people got saved. And I want, I, this is what I'm burdened for. It's been weeks, weeks, months since someone's got saved in here. That's going to take us as a church getting people. Everyone here, testimony is, you know, Jesus Christ, your Savior. We need people to come through those doors and come to church with us. They can hear the gospel and get saved. I want, this is my goal. I want someone to get saved this month in this auditorium. And it's been a while since someone's come forward and gotten saved. And I want someone to get saved. And that's going to take us in doing our part, inviting people, giving out the gospel, going soul winning, giving out tracts. And I pray that you would do that. Go by the track rack. Take as many tracks as you'll use. Every chance you get, invite someone with a smile on your face, invite them to church, get the gospel in their hands, and let's continue to see souls saved. That's the only answer. The only answer is not policy changes and the midterm elections in 2024. The answer is right here. And that's reaching every soul with the gospel that we can and letting the Holy Spirit of God change it from the inside out. And I pray that we'll do that as a church. We're going to be dismissed in prayer. Levon, would you mind coming and praying for us, please, and dismissing us? Thank you so much for visiting with us. God bless you. Have a great weekend, a safe weekend, and uh, we'll see you, Lord willing, on Wednesday. Or tonight. Six. <laughs> all right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. Just thank you for all that you've done. Just thank you for our great nation that we live in. Lord, we pray that we take advantage of uh, the words of God, and Lord, help us to uh, further our testimony to the to the, uh, the people around us, Lord. Pray that we'd be Give us that courage that we need to hand out a gospel tract this week and show them through the Bible how they can be saved and know for sure they're going to heaven. Lord, just pray you be with each and every one as we go about our way. Help us come back tonight safely and uh, meet in your house once again. In Jesus' name, amen.